What's up everyone? Nanman here and we've got another modern meta breakdown video. So last video we did we talked about Death Shadow and what happened after Loris was banned. Now we're going to look at another deck and how it's starting to change based on the Loris ban. That's right. We're talking about Hammer Time. All right, so I've got two versions that we're going to highlight today. Uh, one is kind of the more traditional mono white style, and then we have the blue white version that's starting to crop up a little bit. And we'll talk a little bit about ins and outs of why you might be seeing the the shift as people are starting to figure out, okay, what can we put in here that costs three or more mana as a permanent now that Loris is gone? Uh, already we're seeing different additions to the equipment side of things uh, for the most part our creature base is still relatively the same for the main board uh, and you'll see up above there are a couple of cards that are rotating which is the main core of this deck in order to run this deck successfully you need to have these cards in there they allowed you to tutor up equipments that you need. They allow you to cheat those equipments onto the creatures to smack them with a hammer or beat them down with something else, maybe some death stuff, some lifelink, some, you know, some toolboxy equipments now are starting to get played a little bit more. And we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to jump in and talk about what is the deck trying to do. Um, it is a deck that has been shaped and changed and adjusted over the years uh, since its first started coming out uh, you know people have thought about how to make it work and there's been more and more pieces that keep getting printed for it uh so its power level is just continuing now the creature base lists uh for this fluctuate and change between 20 22 creatures 21 you know depending on where it is and there are a few flex spots that players have at their disposal so we're going to talk a little bit about some of those flex spots and we're going to talk a little bit about the core aspect of the deck that doesn't change up above is kind of that main core that you would expect to see, but there are a few other core creatures that I don't have floating around. So like Memnite, Ornithopter, and Esper Sentinel. These zero one cost creatures that keep coming out, uh, being able to kind of throw them down early and then be able to get value off of them. These f might fluctuate between four and three on their numbers for Ornithopter and Memnite, uh, but really every deck needs to have them in there because imagine having this little unsuspecting flying boat here starts smacking you in the face all right so very good to get these early aggression creatures out it's also important to have these in here because it powers up our pure steel paladin um you know that needs that metal craft so we need to have at least three or more artifacts in order to be able to equip something for zero which we know that our big equipment stuff is often very expensive, the stuff that we care about. Uh, we can just bypass it all together as long as we have enough creatures. Um, so that is really important to, in order to turn on Pure Steel Paladin. Esper Sentinel is very, very powerful. I mean, if you play Commander, you've seen how powerful it is. If you've played Modern, you've seen how powerful it is. But if you're kind of maybe more standard more pioneer maybe haven't really experienced it too much here's a little bit of a rundown whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn you draw a card unless that payer plays x where x is esper sentinel's power now it triggers one time per turn right um it works out really well because you just get some card advantage uh, where white normally is going to have a little bit harder time drawing cards, especially in modern. Uh, so having this as, hey, here's a 1-1, one, one, cost one mana to be able to play it. So I could be able to drop this down turn one. Uh, it kind of can go along with our ornithopter. It's also an artifact creature. So that's also the important aspect that kind of ties in with that high synergy to get pure seal paladin online. So having all of these kind of checking those boxes off all right is it an artifact yes cool does it give me card advantage yes awesome all right is it a low cost creature yep sweet all right so we're checking all these things off it's definitely something that we want to include in our list and if we know modern we know that there's a lot of non-creature spells that like to run around so having that in there is very very powerful um, the next two cards that we're going to highlight are the flex creatures that we talked about before so ginger brute uh, we have seen fluctuations in numbers how many are in, how many are out. You know, a 1-1 one, one haste creature is nice. The other aspect is paying one mana and that it basically gets unblockable um, is very nice. Uh, it basically says, okay, I'm going to 
get it out here, um, equip some big hammer onto it, and guaranteed get in damage. So the, the unblockable is the main reason that the people are running it. The haste is nice, but uh, the unblockable aspect of get it out, pff, get you. Um, but the haste and unblockable together, really, really nice. Core Artifitter, 2-2 um, two, two for 2 mana. When it enters the battlefield, attach an equipment you control to target creature you control. So this is kind of the backup plan. Some hammer time lists have run it. If something goes wrong with your pure, pure steel paladin, something goes wrong, you're not able to get Sakarda's aid. This just kind of help protect, move stuff, or if I've had a lot of stuff destroyed, now I can be able to utilize that and just throw this hammer onto something, throw this sword onto something, you know, different different aspects of that. So plan A is Sugarda's aid, plan B, pure steel paladin, plan C, core outfitter right it's it's that i need to put an equipment on something i need multiple ways to do that in case some of my cards get you know hated out things like that that's where this comes in we talked about pure steel paladin stoneforge mystic we talked about a little bit it's a tutor effect for an equipment card that goes to your hand then you can pay two and just put that equipment onto the battlefield uh so really really nice now spells here Stel steel shaper's gift is also that stoneforge mystic it's just that that search your library for an equipment card reveal it put it into your hand so used to see a little bit more run uh now we're just kind of one seems fine since we're already running stoneforge mystic we've got a good number of other creatures and other artifacts that we don't need to run too many tutor effects for because we're we're going to get what we want right as sentinel is going to trigger we have stoneforge mystics we're, we're going to find our, our equipments we don't have to worry so much now the next one are um blacksmith skill is a protection spell slash pump spell uh because the deck is very much reliant on I'm putting something on an artifact creature and I'm going to hit you with it. Having a little bit more protection helps out when people are like, all right, I equip this, I'm gonna swing in. Cool, here's my removal spell. Just a little bit of safeguard. Think of similar to an infect player that wants to hit you, right? Maybe I have my ink moth nexus activated with a hammer attached to it and I'm swinging in. Well, if you have that one removal spell to get rid of my Ink Moth Nexus, I've got my Blacksmith skill to kind of protect it. Gains Hexproof, indestructible until the end of turn. If it's an artifact creature, it also gets plus two, plus two. Uh, this is one of those that you might see fluctuate. I like the addition in here. Some people are running one, two main board. Some people are running them in their sideboard. It's perfectly fine and reasonable, and you should expect to see these if you're playing against the Hammer Time list. And if you were playing the Hammer Time list, it should be somewhere in your 75, I believe. Now, the artifacts that you'll see are what we have seen up to this point, right? Colossus Hammer gives a creature plus 10, plus 10. Normally it costs 8 to equip it, but we get around that with our Pure Steel Paladin, with our Core Outfitter, with our Sigarda's Aid, which the Sigarda's Aid and pure steel are the main ways to do that, but we, we're finding other ways around it. Uh, Shadow Spear is in here as well, that plus one, plus one trample and lifelink, really cool. Also can get rid of hexproof and indestructible if need be. Um, Spring Leaf Drum is a kind of mana ramp here. Um, and then we've got our three cost stuff. All right, so our Nettlesis, it's a living weapon. So when you play it, it, it basically is a creature it creates that one or that zero zero germ and then it's attached to it but gets plus one plus one for each artifact or enchantment you control uh think kind of our old school artifact style of play with cranial plating it's like that uh but this also counts artifacts and enchantments which we are running things like Sigarda's aid so just that little bit of extra boost that we might get off of it is really nice normally it costs two to equip just very similar to cranial plating does cost a little bit more uh to be able to cast so it, having two of these in here again having an ornithopter and just flying with a nettle cyst all right you're dealing a lot of damage and you don't have to worry so much about hitting someone with a hammer because you have this and it and it's a big enough clock that people are going to have to be scared the other addition that we're starting to see a lot more of is sword of fire and ice and this is very very specific of running this over a different sword right a feast and famine is phenomenal being able to untap your lands being able to make your opponent discard doing things like that but it's not good in modern Right? It's a really great card if you're playing in Commander stuff, but where Sword and Fire Ice is very specific to what the meta is. You know, we see that Merktide 
uh, is coming back with a vengeance. That red blue powerhouse that exists is saying, you know what? Now's our time to shine again. Let's come back. So having something that gives you protection from red and from blue is really, really great. It gives us that card advantage again that we're looking for off of Esper Sentinel, and it can be able to do two damage uh, to target creature or player. So being able to ping off maybe blockers, being able to just do more direct damage and increase our clock. So Sword of Fire and Ice is going to be a mainstay in the main board of Hammer Time decks going forward, as long as that Murktide um, is it style deck is going to be existing. So that's really important uh, to know is our shift. Now that Loris is gone, Sword of Fire and Ice is in here, Nettlesis is in here. Um, you know, we're not going to get too much into the lands other than you should know that there are those sack lands, Horizon Canopy, Silent Clearings in here, uh, Urza Saga to help us tutor up some of our, you know, zero or one cost artifacts so this could be some creatures that we might need this could also be some things like shadow spear all right so it's it does have uh ways for us to be able to help out spring leaf jump depending on on where we want to go for things now let's shift gears real quick i don't want to spend too much time uh, in sideboard other than hey you're going to be running removal um so you know march of the otherworldly light is in here um we've got another sword in here sword of war and peace um, we've got some protection from red and black. We've got some silence, all right? Pithing Needle, basically it's like removal and protection is, is how your sideboard shaped up for this mono white list. Um, now, switching gears real quick, let's look at the blue white list and see the differences. There's not too many, but there is some that we need to highlight and, you know, talk about real quick. So here's our blue white list. A little bit uh, different. You can see uh, our Burton Forge Tender here. So this is very specific to the meta, right? Okay, we're seeing that Murktide list is coming up. Scary, scary, scary popular. Everyone's running red and blue stuff. How can I deal with it a little bit more? Well, this is that meta shift, right? Loris is gone. How are people going to be responding? How are they going to shift and change and adapt? Well, here's one of the ways. So much more red and blues running around. Let's start running more red hate in the main board. I talked about how Sword and Fire and Ice is going to be a mainstay in the decks now. This might even be specific meta choices for specific players. All right, so you're adjusting, saying I'm, I'm shaving off of Memnite to do this, which can be a little bit risky because you're having to force yourself into different avenues to make sure pure steel is online now it, it this is also running a little bit more protection main board by running giver of runes in here so just saying i need more protection to keep my creatures alive and so it's a little bit more of that safe everything that's my game plan lots of low cost creatures that are going to be able to protect me and help keep me alive in here um reality chip is in here which was the main reason why people were saying okay blue white is the way to run hammer time the main thing is because of that reconfigure cost it's a it's basically an equip cost and you can get around that with pure steel paladin with sagarda's aid that you can just equip it onto something and as long as that is equipped or a creature right you can play lands and cast spells from the top of your library so that just gives you so much more access that you didn't have before and that pure white version of hammer time so this is a really cool way to kind of adjust you see people are running like a one of in here it, they're not going over the top with this plan it is still a great game plan to be able to kind of give us access to more and thin out things a little bit more because you say well now i've got cards on the field cards in my hand and now i've got cards on the top of my library that i can mess with our artifacts are very similar Right, we've got our Nettle Sist is in here, our Sword of Fire and Ice, but Cauldra Complete is back in the list. Now, this is one of those cards that we saw a lot of experimentation with Stoneforge based decks when it was first uh, announced and spoiled and came out. People were really trying to jam it in, figure out how it works. I mean, a, a 5 5 indestructible creature with um, haste, right? It's, it's very powerful. It's got first strike, it's got trample, and when this creature deals damage to a player, exile that creature. It's a living weapon, so it comes out as a 5-5 already. And then if you have Pure Steel Paladin online, if you have Sigarda's Aid, now whatever powerful creature you have, 
also gets plus five, plus five, first strike, trample, indestructible haste, and being able to exile creatures when it deals damage. So to that creature that is. So I love Calder Complete coming in. I, I think that Loris being gone has opened up more avenues for the Hammer Time decks to be able to sit here and experiment and play around and find what artifact equipment style package works best in the meta. And you know, we know guaranteed sort of Fire and Ice is staying. All right, we know guaranteed Nettle Sis is back and staying, but what is gonna be, is Culture Complete gonna stay in our list? Is that how it's gonna go? It's very cool, very exciting to see. I mean, I think it's a little bit iffy. Like if you see Culture Complete on the top uh, of your library, you go, well, this is not gonna go so great. I can't cast it off reality chip. I need to hope that it gets into my hand that I can use Stoneforge Mystic to just cheat it out. All right, you don't wanna be paying seven mana and there's less likely chances that you're going to be paying seven mana to be able to just hard cast it from your hand really you're looking to be able to cheat this thing out and get value and start you know snowballing from there we talked about blacksmith skills we see it in the sideboard here uh some things to note that is a little bit different right we've got access to things like meddling mage where you can shut down specific stuff they're running mana leak in here um you know this is a really cool like cheeky uh tech here for the mirror matchup right um manriki gusari here or some variation because i apologize with my pronunciations are always bad but equip creature gets plus one plus two and has tap destroy target equipment so mirror matchup hey i'm gonna be destroying your stuff um so i, I like that in there that's a nice little fun way to do things but this is how you know hammer time is shifting it's changing sort of fire and ice in there nettle sis is in there culture complete maybe in there reality chip maybe in there you know we're starting to see these shifts and changes but let me know what you guys are playing are you running the mono white version are you at blue white have you shifted it up have you added in culture complete are there other equipments that you're testing out lion sash was one that we were kind of talking about speculating maybe this will start seeing some play sideboard main board who knows but uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave some comments. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next game.